All right. So, this is podcast number one. Ready to go? How does this work? You've done a podcast before. I haven't done one before. Uh, introduce yourself and introduce the podcast. So, so what's the name of the podcast? I don't think we've decided yet. I can't remember. Welcome to Family Travel Podcast, or whatever we decide to call it. I'm Amanda. I'm Keith. We're married. We've been married for almost eight years. And one of the things we love to do is travel. And we've talked for years about starting a podcast. So we finally jumped in head first. Yep. So today we're going to be talking about summer vacation. As you can see, we're, we're ready. It might be 60 degrees outside, but we're ready for it's the fine. summer. It's totally fine. Um, and, you know, traveling while during a pandemic, yeah. um, which we've done mm-hmm. a couple times. Mm-hmm. So trying to give some tips and tricks to get through travel while traveling during uh, this crazy time that we live in. But uh yeah, we figured summer travel would be a good topic because kids are getting out of school here or out of Zoom school, whatever type of school in the next couple of weeks. And I think a lot of people are itching to go on vacation and to travel and to do something, whether it's, I don't know, two hours from their house or getting on an airplane and going. So we wanted to offer some of our insights on what travel has been like for us so far in the hopes that it will be interesting or help you out when you're planning your trip. Yeah, so kind of as we jump into traveling, uh, we're going to talk about different modes of transportation that we may be taking and some different tips um, from that aspect. can't do it. For those of you who are listening, we are in full swim attire on our YouTube video and I just had to take the sunglasses off, but I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's probably not a good way to do a podcast. Go ahead. But it's a married way to do a podcast, I'm sure. It's perfectly fine. Um, So like different modes of transportation, different tips, you know, and taking those modes and kind of what to expect really more so than anything else. Um, I don't even know if they're tips, but just kind of, hey, prepare yourself because travel is a little bit different right now, Uh, specifically air travel uh, for the most part. So uh, nationally mandated that, you know, as soon as you set foot on airport property, you got to be in a mask. Uh, Anybody over the age of two has to be in that mask. Airlines are holding to that, at least a couple that we've flown. Yeah, we've flown two different major airlines domestically in the United States. Uh, We flew once in November and you flew once in May or April. May, it was May, it was a couple days ago. So we, um, you know, we didn't notice a big difference other than the masks, I would say. When we traveled in November, it was extremely light. But yeah. you said it's kind of ramping back up now. It was it was like uh, pre-pandemic uh, from my point of view, as far as the, the amount of volume of travelers. Uh, I believe Delta still has not opened up the middle seat, but I know American and United, I'm pretty sure have. And Were it you sounds sitting like next to people then? I was, yes, I was sitting next to people. Um, and, the, and the planes were full completely. Now, American, uh, which is what I flew, um they did not serve any snacks or beverages um on our flights so um delta which we flew uh in november did serve um snacks and beverages this is something that is blowing my mind and for those of you that may or may not know who trey kennedy is i'm totally stealing this off of him right now but he has this hilarious video and it is so true about you know, you, you have to get in this airplane where you're definitely closer than six feet from individuals. So right there, you know, you're breaking the rules, so to speak, on what they're saying is the safe way to um, to be living right now. But then you all get snacks and drinks at the same time. So you're all pulling your mask off and eating and drinking at the exact same time because they're serving it to you at the same time. Um, so that was the only part to me that was interesting. But again, you can control that. You can wait 15 minutes to eat your snack or drink, or you can just not do it depending on how long your flight is. So again, you know, I think it's all about making your choices, right? Yeah. And I will say this, we were fortunate. We, we do have a, a child that we traveled with um, on the one trip and, and she was very good. She was four at the time. Um, so we were, we were very fortunate though. She wore a mask. Um, we didn't have to fight too much. I know I've seen different videos out there. Parents have to fight their kids and, and I feel for them um, completely because it's, 
it's not easy to do, but if you feel like you're going to be in that position and it's just going to be too much, you know, it may not be the time to travel because it seems like airlines have been fairly strict on that, even with kids, yeah. younger kids. And I think that's a key point too, is kind of know your family. I mean, kids are unpredictable at that age, right? So we knew we might be getting into this like couple hour journey of just high stress, fighting, you know, telling the kid to do something they didn't want to do. Um, but she's a pretty good listener overall. So we were fairly confident that we would be able to combat whatever, but know your family and give yourself some grace and try not to set expectations too high um, and just educate yourself, I guess, with what the different policies are, but that's air travel. You know, that's a whole, you know, you've got a whole another group of people that you're factoring in right now, if you're doing air travel. Yeah. So, I mean, but really outside of that, it's, it's pretty standard, right? Like get to the airport early, make sure that you don't just check in time for your luggage and all of that because right. she does does not like to get to an airport early. Um, I am one that is very comfortable being in an airport <laughs> fairly I just, early. You know, if I'm flying, it's because I'm trying to be more efficient and get someplace quicker. And so, I mean, I don't think I'm like. We've pushed it a few times, but it's okay. Um, I've never missed a flight. No, never missed a flight. It's more so making sure that we're there to make sure the bags are checked in and are able My bags to get on have the always made it <laughs> knock on wood. So, um, but yeah, really everything else is, is pretty standard uh, as it comes to travel uh, from the airport standpoint. Yeah, we'll be flying again this summer too, so we can update our thoughts on it. Um, but the road trip, let's jump into the road trip. Yeah, so we did a road trip which um, someone in our family was not necessarily looking forward to. I won't say who. Um. <laughs> our child also prefers flying as she informed us on this road trip. Yes, but at the same time, uh, we did take a road trip. Um, it was about a 12 hour trip uh, according to Google Maps. So we, we ended up splitting it up knowing that there's gonna be times where we have to stop and, and you know, uh, that way we just kind of kept it within what we felt was comfortable for our family. Yeah, speaking of stops on a road trip, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, back at it. Oh, back this, to it. This one's actually coming out now. Yeah. So road tripping, we did a 12 hour road trip, as we said. A um, Couple tricks, especially when traveling with uh, a younger child, make sure you have stuff to entertain. Um, yeah, but don't overpack. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was so much stuff in that kid's book bag that I did not get out for her to play with. But we, um, I actually stole this tri tick, bleh, bleh, bleh. trick, tip, hmm. either hack, <laughs> parent hack, <laughs> hashtag parent hack. Um, I stole this from my hairdresser actually told me about this and I thought it was genius. She said she'll go to like the dollar spot at Target or the um, Five Below is a store near us that has a bunch of cheap stuff. You can get new crayons, new coloring books, activity books, depending on your kid's level of, you know, interest in different things. We, um, I actually just went through, like we have this big bin with all of the coloring books and half of those things had never been touched. And so I just went through and grab some different things, you know, our kids learning how to write right now. So I had one of those books, dry erase books that she could practice her letters with. And, you know, of course we had a screen. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we're fortunate. Our car does have the, 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 the CVD as our, our daughter calls it player. The or, CVD player. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or Blu-ray DVD player that we have uh, in the car. And what we did is I went on Target. Um, she'd been asking to watch a certain Disney Junior cartoon uh, that is not on Disney Plus right now. So um, got her a couple of those DVDs uh, for fairly inexpensive. And, CVDs. Yeah, CVDs. And she got to watch uh, Sophia the First. So that was uh, exciting for her because she'd been wanting to watch that and it kept her entertained as we kind of traveled along but yeah so just it, little things yeah right like it doesn't I don't know I would say no more than really five maybe 10 items I probably brought 15 different items with coloring books and her iPad and all of the different things and I mean she was barely on her iPad 
Yeah, she wasn't on her iPad all that much. Uh, again, the, the the CBD or the DVD player really kind of kept her attention. Uh, we brought a few other movies as well, just in case she wanted to watch those. But yeah, didn't really dig into those all too much. And we, um, again, we were talking about, you know, we did a 12 hour trip and we we're going to do it in two days. Um, so we split it up a little more than half of the first day. I think we got about seven hours on the first day mm-hmm. um, to where we had, you know, roughly about five hours left to go. But what was nice was we stopped about four hours in um, and grabbed lunch. We had we had um, actually packed our lunch. We did a cooler uh, with lunch items as well as we had our snack bag and, and everything else to kind of help keep costs down a little bit and not necessarily be just eating fast food all the way down. Yeah, and we are still in a pandemic and we felt yeah. like anytime we could limit our interaction with, you know, because going through different states, we live in a state that is very conservative as far as, um, you know, requiring masks in all businesses and people are abiding by that kind of in our area, though we really don't go out that much. But we weren't sure what the states are going to be like that we were driving through. We know they're looser than our state. And just to try to, you know, protect ourselves and our family, we were thinking that would be less stops also so it's kind of all those three items right saved a little bit of money didn't need a bunch of fast food junk and you know limited exposure potentially yeah so we hit costco up and did kind of a big haul and took food down for the week um two for the house it wasn't just for the car ride but it was for the house that we were staying in yeah and this was an extended family trip too so there was 11 people in one house um so that was another reason why we did a lot of eating in at the house because yeah yeah, Anyways, once, once this doesn't there. really have anything to do with the road trip. <laughs> no. Um, so, but then we split it up. Um, but what we kind of found after we got to our destination on day one, we're like, wow, we, we probably could have kept going. Yeah, for sure. But I'm glad we did it. Yeah. But then no, we were no. fresh when we arrived at the destination the next day. Which was fantastic. So, and then we got into the destination the next day. Uh, easy enough. Had a driveway to park our car. Everything else, it was it was good. Again, we we probably overpacked for for the week. Yeah, and I actually that's one thing I like really love to do is to plan and be as efficient as possible and take. It's probably another reason I like to fly. Like it forces you to really just not overpack. But it was so easy to overpack, and we have one of the sweet cars that has the storage under the seats. So then we could just pack that much more stuff, and we used a lot of it. But we definitely had things like I had way too many clothes, which. I'm usually pretty good about that, but I had way too many clothes. I didn't wear half the outfits I brought. Yeah, but again, though, we, we really didn't go out once we got there. We, we went to the beach. Yeah, um, we did go to the pool, the public pool. We went to the public pool, but again, you know, social distancing was in fact and, and everything else, but we really, we didn't really get out of swimsuits or just kind of lounge wear for the most part because we weren't going out to have dinner each night. We, we cooked each night at the house. Yeah. Uh, which is great. It was it was actually really fun. Uh, it was a each, ton of fun. Each family took each, a night and and cooked. There's a good tip for you. Yeah. So we had, like I said, we were there with four different family units. Okay. So each family was responsible for getting the ingredients and cooking dinner one night of the trip. And then we ordered in pizza one of the nights and mm-hmm. we went out to dinner on the last night. So it worked out really well. And But that was a lot of fun. It was, it you know, and then for lunches and stuff, the the area that we were in had some really cool food trucks and, and different things. So it was, it was cool to hit those up one of the days uh, yeah. while we we're at the beach. When we were at the public pool, we just ate at the public pool, you know. And then obviously we had a ton of leftovers because what happens when you get a whole bunch of people in a house? You overcook. So um, <laughs> a ton of leftovers, uh, which was great though. But I think really by the end of the week though, we didn't like throw out all that much stuff, and we were no. able to keep basically everything that we had yeah. gotten. But again, you know, what's really cool on the road trip uh, from a food perspective for us was having the cooler, yes, um, which is great. And, and then having our snack bag and, and all that was accessible. And we just made sure that those kind of got packed. Yeah. Um, you know, cooler standpoint, you know, a couple tips that we saw, I think that we try to utilize is either containers or, or layering the cooler with something to keep anything that you don't want to get wet from ice melting or anything else like yeah. above but still getting chilled yeah from from those cooling i agents. had a big like rubbermaid container that i put a bunch of stuff to make sandwiches in you could pre-make your sandwiches also but i just put a bunch of stuff in this big rubbermaid and then put that in the cooler that way when it was lunchtime i could just grab that out and make the 
make sandwiches. And, and we didn't do this just because of where we had stopped. We, we did a, a picnic in the van, but I mean, I think, you know, you could stop along the way. There's always. Well, I feel like we would have done it out. It was raining when we stopped. That's right. That's, That's why right. we had to have the picnic in the van. But yeah, our intention was not necessarily to eat in the car, but we did. And it was fine. It was good. Yeah, it worked out great. And, you know, but not only can you do rest stops, but always look for different state parks or national parks along your route. You know, you may be able to go again, COVID, some are open, some aren't, some have mask mandates, some don't. So just kind of be aware of that. Be flexible. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing is yeah. just be flexible. You know, don't set certain expectations that aren't realistic right now um, or really ever, right? Yeah. <laughs> it never goes exactly as you plan, but especially not right now in the middle of a pandemic. So I would say just have you know, flexible expectations, and then you'll enjoy it that much more. Yeah. Don't get too worked up if something doesn't. The pandemic probably stopped us from stopping more because I'm someone, if I see something along the side of the road that looks really interesting, we're going to stop. Like the world's biggest golf tee. Yes. We've stopped at the world's biggest golf tee before the largest rocking chair. Um, or so they say, uh, we passed a dinosaur world, which I thought about going in. <laughs> So, I'd be more interested in the Corvette Museum that we drove by. Yes, we also drove past the Corvette Museum. But again, uh, due to the pandemic, we just wanted to make sure that we were trying to limit our stops as much as possible. Yeah, so that's our, if you have questions too about like the experience with driving versus the experience with flying, um, you know, I'd love oh, to yeah, for sure. answer Always. any questions. With ground travel though, or, or, you know, doing a road trip, you may want to be running a car. Same thing with air travel, right? Like we may have to run a car if we're, we're, we're doing air travel. Yeah. Pay attention. If you've zoned out, if we've bored you to tears to yeah. this point and you're still listening for some reason, pay attention to this next bit on rental cars. Cause this is as of May, 2021, kind of crazy. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of places, very tough to find rental cars right now. Uh, seems like and i don't know i'm pretty sure i read an article on this but it seems like the rental car companies that helped them get through the pandemic sold off a lot of their fleets and through that there's now a shortage because everyone's now traveling again yeah so um just if you're going to rent a car make sure you do it as soon as possible um that way you can kind of guarantee yourself a car uh, still very easy to you know if once you get the car same same process extremely easy to get extremely safe nothing out of the ordinary from that standpoint um but just just be aware there there's a shortage so you're gonna yeah. want to get that rental car i two quick stories on this one sure. on the rental car so number one um, i know someone who was in florida and needed to rent a car to travel across florida and literally could not find a rental car within you know however many miles however far they could get an uber to take them from their destination to a rental car spot there was nothing nothing so they got i don't even know if i've told you this a u-haul van they literally rented this. a u-haul yeah. van yeah. and drove across florida and returned a u-haul van because they needed transportation um so that was one thing and then i forgot the other story because no problem the, the u-haul is pretty good one there um the other thing too, as you're traveling, obviously lodging, um, depending on where you're going to stay. If, if it's a hotel or as we did on our road trip, our ultimate destination, we stayed at a, a, a house um, in a beach area. So uh, hotels, again, depending on the state, depending on the chain, you know, mass mandates are going to be in, involved. Um, but honestly, I've stayed in a lot of hotels um, through the pandemic because I've done some small little traveling around um, just due to what I do for a living, um, outside of podcasting with my wife, but, um, we, um, I've never felt, I, I've always felt safe, like cleaning procedures are in place. If you don't feel comfortable take in your own yeah. sanitizing wipes, wipe down all the main contact areas, which honestly, probably I, I had done anyways beforehand before the pandemic. So, but everything seems very, very safe from a lodging standpoint. Um, again, felt it felt clean. Yeah. Uh, never felt concerned from my point of view, at least. Yeah. No, I mean, I've stayed not like you in hotels, but a couple of times I have it's felt fine. Nothing. But, but again, I think this all goes back to knowing your comfort level, right? I mean, I think everybody's itching to travel, everybody's itching to get out and get on the road and get in the airplane and go to the beach or go to the pool, do whatever. But I think at the end of the day, just know we are still in a pandemic. Um, so again, just be flexible, right? Like have your mask with you. If you need it, use it. If you don't need it. 
Don't worry about it. Whatever you want. Just we're still in a pandemic, but travel so you don't lose your mind. <laughs> yeah, and this may con- be controversial. I hope it isn't. Just be kind. It, people are just trying to uphold different rules that they're told to. Yeah, it's not them. Like yeah. I, whether you agree or disagree, I don't really care. It just be kind to people. Yeah. Like it, if we're kind, and it makes it makes life such 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 easier. And also, you're on vacation. Have fun. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, so talking about like, so we've talked about road tripping, we've talked about how to get to our destination, but we're going to talk about a couple of destinations that we're actually going to be going to this summer. Yeah. Um, the first one being Disney world, Disney. So we are a Disney world family. Yeah. Um, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy Disney. Um, I, I wasn't leaving oh. videos showing my mini ears. <laughs> I do love you though. So, um, yeah, again, for those that are listening on the pod, uh, Amanda's office has got many years in the background here. So. Oh yeah, I forgot. This is also a podcast. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, they're they're not just they're not just tuning in to see our faces. They're hopefully going to no, pick they're up. Definitely the... not tuning in to see our faces. Yeah, isn't that the truth? But so Disney travel uh, right now, couple couple main items. We're not we could we could do we will do maybe our next yes. podcast should be disney <laughs> just, themed. Just i feel disney. like it definitely should be just we'll do our specific. next one will be disney and we're not sure how often we're gonna do this either no weekly mm-hmm. would be nice but i don't know that that's realistic we'll see, we'll see. anyways well disney will be the next one but anyway so a couple tips though with disney right now they are limiting park capacity so as you would book um your travel uh, you know we we love staying on property so that's kind of what we always do um don't necessarily have to do that though you know that i think they've got the good neighbor hotels and and those and or there's vrbos in orlando i mean orlando is a destination all in of itself and we're talking disney world because that's where we travel to obviously disneyland just opened up as well but that's only for california residents right now so we're not even going to get into yeah, all of that yeah, that's a lot to unpack um but so from a disney world perspective you're staying on property um, you do have to make park reservations, though, to get into the parks. So as soon as you make those reservations, highly recommend. I think this is probably the biggest thing. If yeah. you're if you're doing a Disney trip, whether you've been, I mean, if you haven't been within the last year, year and a half during the pandemic since this park reservation thing started, it's totally new. And if you've never been to Disney, holy moly, the amount of planning that's required that goes into it. I mean, I love it because I'm a researcher and an organizer and a spreadsheet person. <laughs> So I absolutely love what it takes to put together a Disney trip right now, but a lot of people don't like, they just want to click a button and have their vacation be done. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, if you feel overwhelmed as we talk about this, highly recommend checking out um, a travel agent. We- yeah, for sure. Lean on people, yes. lean on other people for when sure. it comes to planning your trip, because it can be very overwhelming again, whether it is Disney world or, anywhere anywhere honestly yeah but back to i think i've cut you off probably six times now that's okay you can finish your thought so the 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 i was gonna finish it for you the park reservation is is very key yeah as as you said is key do that um and then really from there you can start planning out your trip now the one thing if you had been to disney in the past it used to be 120 days that you could book food 180 180 i'm sorry so now it's 60 yeah um, so just be aware of that. Um, so you lose a little bit of potential, but just understand and again, be flexible and kind of what you want to do and where you want to go. But really, you got to set up your parks first. I think that's the main. That's point. the main thing. I mean, we can we'll go into everything else in our next little Disney podcast, yeah. I would say. But the key thing is make sure and before you would even book a trip, this is again why I would right now more than ever, I would lean on a travel agent or a travel advisor or a travel planner, somebody that can help you navigate all of this because in theory you could book your Disney vacation especially if you weren't staying on Disney property and when you go to make when you go to make your park ticket reservations there may be none available like June is already filling up for a number of the different parks Uh, right now in October on October 1st I don't think you can get into Magic Kingdom or Epcot right now I think those park reservations are completely booked as of you know this is May 5th that we're filming this and Disney sometimes does open up more park reservation options, but the reality is you want to know when you're going to book your trip that you can go to the parks that you're planning on going to. 
Yeah, and again, it, a, why is the park reservation system in place? It's because of the pandemic. So right. like, this is something that they are limiting the capacity. So this is something that they put into place uh, to make sure that they can you know, abide by the guidelines that they've set forth and been approved to be able to open. Yeah. Um, now, there's talk that they're going to raise those numbers up as far as how many people they're going to allow in the parks. So again, it may open those those items right. up, but you may be asking why October 1st is sold out. Well, it's the start of the 50th anniversary for Walt Disney World. Right. So yeah. Um, yeah. that's that's kind of why they're, you know, but major holidays, same thing, you know, 4th of July, Memorial Day, I'm sure Labor Day weekend, you know, the big travel weekends are yeah. always going to be busier yeah. um, from that standpoint. But, you know, as far as like going to Disney during the pandemic, again, you're going to be required to wear a mask um, and they're very strict on that. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to do a temperature check before going into, um, which if I get freaked out about because I sweat and this I get guy hot. Cannot, and... it, you also don't like to get your blood pressure taken. No, I hate it. <laughs> Anyways. So yeah, just be aware. I mean, they're going to, they're going to take your temperature before you go into any Disney property. Um, actually, did they do it at the resort? No, just the parks. The parks and Disney Springs. And Disney Springs. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh, and some restaurants. We did have to get our temperature checked uh, going into beaches and cream. Oh, yeah. When we were. Oh, that's right. When we were there in November. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because that restaurant is not inside one of the parks. So you yeah. haven't had your temperature taken, I guess, to get in there. But anyway, so just be aware. There's a lot that goes into Disney right now in general. And then the pandemic kind of adds a whole nother layer to Disney. But as far as our experience in Disney, Again, we knew we were going to have to wear a mask. We were there in November last year in 2020, and we knew we were going to have to wear a mask. So, mm -hmm. you know, we were fine with it. I wear a mask all day, um, sometimes for my other job. So I'm used to being in a mask for eight hours, but you weren't. So that was kind of a new thing for you that you did not enjoy because you work, you know, remotely. You work from home, but it was... Um, it was definitely strictly enforced. So just be aware if you don't want to wear a mask right now, don't do Disney right now. Just don't do, there's a million other things you can do. And if it's going to bother you or ruin your trip, then just, you know, that's a lot of money to, oh, to be sure. uncomfortable. Um, it'll be interesting when we go this summer because we haven't been to Disney. I mean, in a long time in the summer, we've been to Disney a lot, but usually it's more winter months not summer months. So we'll see how that is wearing a mask in the summer. Um, we're fully prepared for it as much as you can be. We're going to spend a lot of time, I think, at our resort pool. And that's a whole nother thing too, is, you know, get creative when it comes to Disney. Yes, you can run crazy in the parks and be busy 24 seven, but you can also you know, schedule out time to relax. I think that's why sometimes Disney is not appealing to people is the idea of being in a theme park for your entire vacation is not relaxing. And I totally get that because it's just a different type, but you could definitely have some downtime and some relaxing time. For sure. And there's even time in, in the, there's even time in the parks, right? They have relaxation stations and different things that you can take off the mask and yeah. do that. The best, biggest, biggest one, another travel tip is find a good fitting mask that you're comfortable in yeah. uh, wearing a long time. I mean, and, and take multiple too, because they might get wet. You might get sweaty. It's nice to have, extra mass to kind of change in and out of yeah the ones that i really like sorry let me see what's in, how long have we been filming this 35 minutes squirrel okay maybe people are only gonna want to listen to us for so long well, i know so but anyways so when it comes to masks i really like the janu brand i don't know if i'm saying that right this is obviously not sponsored but they're like an, a scrub hospital scrub brand yeah and they're, they're pretty comfortable they are I like those we've got sure. quite a, and our daughter who is you know four or five during this all has been wearing those and she doesn't complain about them at all no honestly i mean the disney ones are a little bit expensive but they're they're really comfortable i i really enjoy although disney, disney has new ones i haven't tried them yet so i we'll know have to see i know that's what i'm saying so we're talking like the yeah so we'll have to see but the ones that they had before i really liked so anyways but disney definitely can be on the summer trip yes. uh feel very safe extremely yes. safe like disney the magic's still there you know like I, you can't hug characters there, there are things you cannot do yeah. but they still look disney still does disney yeah in our opinion sorry i'm gonna take these off for the rest of the time i'll stop fidgeting in our opinion the magic was totally still there yeah for sure but it is about expectations right so if this is going to be your once in a lifetime disney trip and you want it to be exactly what you were maybe when you were a kid 
it's not going to be that, but I think it can still be really, really cool. Like yeah. the cavalcades, I hope those never go away. Yeah, it's really cool. So they replace the one time a day big parade with different smaller ones that come across, come around multiple times throughout the day. Yeah. And you never know when they're going to come. You just got to listen for the music to go way up uh, on the system within the park. Yeah, and so then the kind of run. Are really cool. Yeah. So very, very cool. But we can get into that. Yeah. And the next one. Yeah. 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 So we'll move on from Disney, but if you have questions, leave them in the comments below because we will try to answer some of those in the next Disney video that we do. Yeah, for sure. So the other trip that we're taking is we're actually going back to a beach. Uh, we had just done a beach vacation here in April uh, mm -hmm. for spring break, mm -hmm. but uh, talked so highly of it. Now we're going to go with the other side of the family. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do another big family trip. Yeah. But uh, you know, beach vacations really not, again, just depends on where you're at as far as local rules go, but really for the most part, you're outdoors. Uh, you can socially distance. So you can, yeah. you can kind of just hang and, and chill, right? Like that's, that's the beauty of a beach vacation. Um, it can be whatever you want. Yeah. You can be as busy as you want, or you can be as lazy as you want on a beach vacation. And yeah. depending on where you're at, whether you're in a house or a hotel, you know, you really can control your environment more so than, you know, again, doing like a Disney or any sort of resort in that sense. Yeah. And if you're getting a house, like I highly recommend having a pool there. I felt like we had a pool at the house that we were in here previously and we kind of hung there a lot and did yeah. night swims and all kinds of cool stuff. Like yeah. it, was, it was fun. If uh, you're going to splurge at all, I mean, obviously yeah. it's more to have a pool in a house, but if you are going to look for something, you know, if this, if let's say your 2020 vacation got canceled and you want to do something this year, but you're still not hundred percent about being around other people necessarily like at a common pool or community pool, you could definitely look then to, to splurge and make sure there's a pool at your house. Um, Cause we did, we spent a lot of time there so that we first of all, didn't have to wrangle 11 people, you know, to a destination, but also it was nice knowing that, you know, we were around our a bubble and honestly the beach that we went to we went to the um like the Destin area the the panhandle area of florida um the beaches are awesome there holy cow um i, I don't i don't want to get into a fight with anybody that may think the other beaches are, are better um but man it's in my mind you can't beat the west coast of florida the gulf coast there especially up in that panhandle area you know the white sandy beaches that don't get hot they're just they're they're really really good and i hate sand so <laughs> This, I know. I'm surprised you're this even is, talking this, this much about the beach. You scheduled golf the morning we were supposed to go to the beach yes. so that you could have half a day at the beach instead of which a was, full day at which the beach. Which was just perfect for me. Um, but, um, you know, hey, let us know. What, what's your favorite beaches? Do you have a favorite beach destination? Do you have a favorite summer vacation yeah, destination? Yeah, I would love to know that. You know, I grew up kind of going to one destination, which was great. Um, but I have one that I went to very regularly. And now we've kind of fallen in love with a new beach. So we could see, you know, us having this be kind of our summer thing, but we love to experience new things too. So we want to hear from you guys on, you know, your favorite beach or where would you go um, domestically in the United States at this point, but eventually we'll probably branch out to international. I would imagine I've been international. You've never, right. Outside of Mexico, which is international in Canada. So never been off the continent. Let's we'll put it that way. Right. Right. <laughs> Maybe someday. Maybe someday we'll do a big trip. But yeah, let us know. Uh, and, and you know, as we get through this, we're we're gonna hopefully be providing some some tips and tricks and hacks, you know, for travel um, with a family. Mm -hmm. uh, is really gonna kind of be the main concept of of this podcast. We'll come up with a title for the podcast. I think it was gonna be point. like traveling family or something. The, like the, I think the, it was the traveling the traveling family. Yeah, the traveling family. So um, maybe we'll even do an interview with the kid yeah, at some point. There we go. Get her insights on taking a road trip versus flying. You think we ramble just wait um but <laughs> um but thanks for joining us um hit subscribe hit the like button you know uh, for those of you watching this on youtube uh, or subscribe to this on uh your favorite podcast channel and uh we'll see you next time where do we time. post this uh it'll be well we'll have to see hopefully it'll be on all major podcast channels but it's going to go out through anchor uh which is spotify Follow along. Follow along and we'll see you the next time.